This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today's deck was built by Kilo Power. Kilo Power is the username on MTG Online. Yeah, Boomer Magic Arena, MTG Online. And this deck actually 5 owed a league. There is a website, another Boomer location, Daily MTG, where they publish decks that go 5 0 in MTGO leagues. And this one came up, and I was like, that's weird. It's freaking weird. It's got weird card choices. It's a weird deck. It's a Griffin Airy deck. So, at the beginning of your end step, if you gained three or more life, create a 2 2 Griffin creature token with flying. It's got a little life gain theme with Speaker of the Heavens. A Johnny Strength of the Pride, just two ofs. It's got Bond of Flourishing, which I think is really smart. A lot of people play Revitalize with Griffin Airy, which is three life draw a card. This is three life, but you also look at your top three, reveal a permanent. I would rather choose from my top three than have to um, just draw a random card. So I like the Bond of Flourishing. I think that's pretty smart. Uro, good reason to play Bant. You just drop the Uro. And, but there's some other things about this deck I don't get. Uh, there's a Pulse of Marasa. That's a good throwback card that I actually really like from my duels days. But it's so weird now. And Luris, the only things to get back are the area itself and the Speaker of the Heavens. So it's a very narrow Luris. One to Fairy? Excuse me? This is freaking to Fairy, bro. Even my spells don't last forever, at least not anymore. <laughs> In a soft, warm voice from behind him. Okay, I had never read the flavor text of Teferi, but now that I have, I'm a little scarred. Um, so there are four <laughs> Faith's Fetters and four Elite Guard Mages, which I think are more sweet ways to gain life. Faith's Fetters, a reprint in M21, where you gain four life when you play it. It can enchant any permanent, including a land, and that permanent can't use its abilities unless they're mana abilities. So when I talk about land, I mean like Castle Lock Thwain would not be able to draw cards anymore. This is good for hitting Witch's Oven too. Um, and of course, if you enchant a creature, it can't attack or block. You can enchant a Planeswalker and just shut it down. A good way to gain life for sure. I like the Ajani Strength of the Pride mostly for the zero, but it does give you access to Pride Mates, which with all this life gain, can get pretty strong. And two ECDs, three Elder Gargaroths, because whenever attacks or blocks, you gain, th you can choose to gain three life, or you can do other things. And Dream Trawler. A Dream Trawler. However, uh, also, I think it's like 27 land. Yeah, 27 land. Pretty high on the land count, too. Especially with Bond of Flourishing, but you need a row to do work. I'm... I, I have to make a few changes. The sideboard, as far as uh, one boarding, it has a lot of very narrow cards. There aren't many things I would put in for best of one, to be honest. So I'm going to have to just cheat, and it's going to surprise absolutely no one that I'm going to take out some of the cards that I think are silly, and I'm going to add to Fairy, uh, Time Raveler. Do I cut a land? Normally I would never cut a land, but I'm going to today. But yeah, I'm curious to see how this deck holds up in best of one, because when I look at the deck, I think it must be terrible against Wilderness Reclamation, which is very popular in best of three. But in best of one, that is not, and I just kind of want to know, can all this life gain just shut down those Rakdos and red decks, and how does this do against mono green? I'm not really sure. Um, Gargaroth, like we saw Baneslayer do a few videos ago, can take over games. Speaker of Heavens might be amazing, I don't know. But yeah, this is what we're going to try today, and we're going to dive in and let this nonsense begin. Unranked for starters today. I don't trust this pile, but I like this hand. We can go fetch blue. We can play a turn two Bond of Flourishing, a turn three to Fairy Time Raveler, a turn four a Johnny if we want to. I don't know if a Johnny will be particularly good on turn four. Hunted Witness. All right, let the party begin. 
We would love another white source, but the deck doesn't give us that option. Instead, we have another Uro, another Dream Trawler, and another Ajani. Which one of these are actually good here? I think we take the Dream Trawler, quite honestly. It gives us a top-end threat that will probably overpower an opponent playing cards like Hunted Witness. It certainly puts a clock on the opponent of, well, you better do something. Trawler is coming. Witness with the hit. And go. So probably raise the alarm from the opponent. We can shock here and play the Uro to play two lands this turn, which I think is pretty good. Probably better than Teferi, quite honestly. Teferi just gets attacks and dies. Not the finest in the matchup. That is the third Uro we've seen so far. That's a lot of Uro. So, opponent on Go Wide Mono White, they play a Glorious Anthem and pump the squad. Down to 17. We have a few options. I think I like using Uro, and if I hit an untapped land, which should be all of our land now, I can play Teferi and bounce the Anthem, and if I don't hit the untapped land, I can cast Bond of Flourishing. All right, so we'll hit the Bond of Flourishing, then we'll have six mana for the Dream Trawler next turn. We have double blue, we have double white. We have just like all the colors that we need. I'll just grab blue cuz, I don't know why. Elspeth conquers death, Elder Gargaroth. And then the land that we want to play to make sure that we cast Dream Trawler next turn. Some good cards there, but I don't think they can stop the Dream Trawler. We'll see. They might have enough anthems to go over the top. They have a lot of creatures. <laughs> that, that, there's no, no question about that. Ooh, they play a Giant Killer. Does that mean they have another? Giant Killer is really good against the Dream Trawler, actually. That is, uh, that is a rip. I think that means we're going to lose, quite honestly. Opponent thinking about playing a Loxodon? Yeah. Okay, so their whole hand is on the table, and it's a good one. I don't think I can win anymore. The giant killer is just game over, man. The giant killer was the was uh, all they needed. I can play the Teferi. We can bounce. Well, if we bounce the giant killer, they get to use it a different way, so it's not that good. If we play the Dream Trawler, they tap it, and they hit for 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, 16. Not quite lethal. And then I guess the Dream Trawler could attack the next turn and gain life if they did do it that way, and it uses their mana. We could play the Uro. If they tap the Uro next turn, the Uro attacks, gains three. Dream Trawler's better then. All right. Um, YOLO. LOL. I wish I were that good at math. No turn two, but we're on the play and we're uroing into Gargaroth, so let's give it a shot. I've been thinking about the last game. There's probably a million decisions I made poorly. I think I expected Dream Trawler to get there, and then we got dumpstered by exactly one card, Giant Killer, which I should have known was in their deck. I also never found face fetters or picked one, and I should have been on the lookout for that. Alright, double blue. I'll play Uro against it. If they want to counter Uro, that's okay. I think we should save the Teferi. We go for a cutthroat. That's annoying. That is very annoying. Our deck is probably in a bad place. These decks are so bad against mono red that they don't actually get played in best of one, but that's what I get for playing unranked. I have to play against decks that shouldn't be played. We want another green here. 
Yep, let's go big. Make the opponent counter everything for a little while. Try to get to a place where we can double spell with Teferi. If they have a Brazen Borrower, it looks really good here. Alright, they don't have a Brazen Borrower, but they're casting their Mystical Dispute. That's fine. Next up. We gotta fill this graveyard somehow. Alright, we have enough to pay for Mystical Dispute and Quench here. We have four cards in the graveyard. Bond takes it to five. I think I should start with this though. <laughs> wow. Opponent is A plus at magic. Hmm, I guess we'll grab another Teferi for next turn. So, how many negates do you run? Let's give him a chance. Alright, we're casting Borrower. The opponent's hoping to shut me down. The fairy resolves. Nice deck, dude. Ooh. Although, I think I'm supposed to play this. Oh, this is actually tricky, because if the opponent has another Borrower and they can bounce this, or anything to bounce this, they get to attack the Teferi. Or I play the Fates Fetters, and if they bounce the Fetters, they still get to kill the Teferi. But they might not know that. <clears throat> I think better to play the creature, by far. Maybe that means I'm supposed to play Uro, but this has Reach. Maybe the opponent doesn't know that either. It's not the card you see every day. They have a full hand. How do they have seven cards? They have not drawn any extra cards. They just haven't played any land whatsoever. All right, well, we got them tapping their mana. And if we draw a land, we can play Uro and Gargaroth. No, we can't. We don't have the right amount of green. All right, play it again. Play this too. We still have to deal with it. He's a big boy can take over a game. They said go. I would like to attack. Let's just skip right to the good part where they bounce my Gargaroth again. <laughs> Alright, third borrower. And concede. <laughs> what, you don't have the stomach for tangling with the Gargaroth? Weird speaker of the heavens turn, uh, hand with all the bonds. Okay, we'll give it a shot. Come at him. Still no uh, griffins. Like z three games, zero griffins. Haven't seen any. Haven't played any. Opponent with a goose, giving us the real shutdown. They might be afraid to block, so we'll attack first. No fear. All right. How much do we need more land? How much do we need cards like Elite Guard Mage? and Elder Gargaroth. When you're looking at three Bond of Flourishing, I have no idea. I kind of like this one, though. We can try to get to Angel territory as quickly as we can. Temple of Milady. There's one I don't see every day anymore. What are you doing with your mana there, Goosey? They kept on top, too. Downside to attacking? Possibly. I'll threaten... Well, I guess Bond could hit another speaker. People feel like there's more possibilities when there's more land on the field. You have to balance giving away information about your hand versus making the opponent think that you might have this or might have that. Versus what you might actually play. Alright, Bond of Flourishing. Those are lands. What do we need? We need another green. 
We can use Fable Passage to go get it, and that doesn't hurt us. Twenty-six. Only one more life needed to make angels. That's got to be scary for the opponent. Let's see if they can get rid of the speaker. They have Cultivate. So this might be a ramp into Ugin deck, which is also something I don't know how this deck competes with. ECD off the top. You can hear them. If you listen close, everybody, you can hear the CGB fan saying, don't forget to activate Speaker of the Heavens. I did not forget. Dream Trawler. All right, to beat Ugin, I guess we have to build a pretty sick board. Okay. Double cultivate. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So next turn they have eight with or without the goose, right? I guess it's not exactly clear. They have found a heartless act target. Did they just draw that? Possibly. So this is seven, eight. I guess I can buy one more turn with the fate's feathers on the goose. Is that worth it? I could also just hold Fate's Fetters and hit the Ugin or the other large creatures the opponent plays. It's not like we're giving up a ton of value here. If they Ugin this board, we just ECD and rebuild. I think we're better off using Uro. Hey yeah. All right, might want another land. The mighty Griffin Airy, who just never shows up. Let's take it. It's, it's a key part of our strategy that we haven't even been able to enjoy so far today. So as much as I want a land to play Dream Trawler after an Ugin, I think here we keep the Airy, but we don't play it right away. Two ECDs is pretty nice, too, if the opponent's going to try to throw haymakers like Ugin. Eh, they go for Master of Time. So there's Sultai. They had to use the goose for the double blue. That's awkward. So we don't want to play Elspeth Conquers Death or Fetters, whichever we choose, pre-combat. Because if we do that, then the opponent will phase one of these. Or they'll... they might dig, but they'll probably just phase. So we go face... And they'll go discard, which we'd rather have. The damage is important here. It makes the opponent come up with the right answers. They have a murderous rider for the token. That's fine. Down to 10. So, we go for Eerie. Pay two life. Fetters. Shut this down. If the opponent wants to get rid of the fetters, they have to minus the Ugin for four, which gets rid of the Master of Time anyway. Hmm. Interesting. All your fears are given for. Don't see Ashiok all the time these days. So to gain more life, we could play the Uro, but that won't deal with the Ashiok. If the opponent just wants to make two threes, do I care about Ashiok? Here they can make a food. This is an interesting spot where it feels like I should probably just Elspeth Conquers Death the Ashiok. Because right now without a five on the board, the opponent can play Ugin and keep their Ashiok. Let's see if they're willing to lose their goose to protect Ashiok. Because I would love to get rid of that goose. The food is actually a problem. If they don't block with the... Okay. Wow. 
have a ton of spot removal. Okay. I'm really glad they blocked with the goose and used the spot removal. And they're down to not much to defend their Ugin. But that's why we attack the Ashiok. If they use resources to defend it, we just knock it out. Another goose. Very frustrating. Too much life gain. Stop. It's probably time for Trawler. Yeah, they can't play the Ugin unless they draw a land off the top two, if they have it. They probably don't have it, but there's nothing wrong with being careful. What's it gonna be, Goose? I think they should take it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Brazen Borrower on Fate's Fetters to activate Teferi, but they just have to discard the card. It's kind of a weird play. It's a very weird play. What am I getting back? I have a few goodies to get back. Speaker of the Heavens is looking like a lot of angels right now. The Fairy Master of Time can kind of stop Dream Trawler for a minute, but not very well. I could also ECD this to Fairy Master of Time. Or just replay this. Both are fine. This one also gets me another Griffin. Let's go for it. And they know about it. Oh, but so much... The other plays are more mana efficient. Eh, I'm still doing it. All right, tap land off the top, scrying to the top. Expect it to be a good one. The two threes come at me. Two more land. Down to 36, what are we getting back? I think the speaker is a really good grab, right? The opponent kept on top, they probably have another removal spell. So, if that's the case, we should just grab a Guard Mage for value. It's either a Sweeper or a Removal spell, otherwise why would they keep it? Gargaroth's pretty good. We already gained life this turn, so it's a good turn for Dream Trawler. Opponent probably throws a Brazen Borrower into the path. Nothing I can do about an Ugin now if that's what they kept. So, let's go for it. Go big. This is really good against a removal spell though. Okay, I kept Uro. I'd keep Uro too. All right, what they drew was not a land. Opponent thumbing around the graveyard is this a, could it be a command the Dreadhorde? Nope, just bringing back an Uro. Now there's a land. And they're holding it. Probably a land with cycling then. It isn't much of a bluff. So, so far the only blue cards that we've seen are Planeswalker, Brazen Borrower, Ashiok. Let's I think here that we go for Teferi and try to lock out their um, whatever their instant speed stuff is, or at least make them reveal it here. They've had a lot of spot removal so far. Very curious what they plan to use. 
resolves. Wow. I know my responsibility. So right now you're taking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. If we can draw three cards, we can win. This is one. This is two, but I don't see three. I don't see number three. Still, we may as well do it before combat. Um, if we send back the Uro, they can play it again, gain more life, but they have to make all these plays. They only have four cards in the graveyard. I guess I'm not that scared of the Rider or the token. Don't worry, I got this. comes Uro, again drawing for the Dream Trawler. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, this is 13. Oh, yeah, we draw off the Dream Trawler. Shows you how often I play this Dream Trawler card, but the opponent still has food. They still have the food, not lethal. And snapping off Uro, it's 3 to 47. The life gain power of the deck is in full effect. Three more life from another Uro. Nine total. Still very dead. I guess they can make food with the goose by another turn. But no thank you. They they decide that's enough. Uh, in interesting pair of decks though. Interesting soul tie build with a lot of adventure and planeswalkers. And we finally got to see the Gryphonary do its thing. I scooped three games in a row to bad mana. So those definitely won't be in the video, but I have changed a lot of basics into temples and I've gone back up to 28 land because best of one is broken. Like, just an absolutely broken game. And MTG Arena is rigged. And we, you know that already. But when I play 30 land, I actually win games. That That is what I learned last week. So we'll see if we have to go all the way to 30 or if we can play a reasonable 28 instead and actually play five drops in our deck. But yeah, you'll be able to see the the changes to the deck at the end for you cool kid club members who stay till the end. So, let's do it. Let's make griffins. Shock in the Godless Shrine, play the Charming Prince. Looks like we're up against possibly the Yorian Wrath style of deck. Normally I'd really want to play an Uro next turn, but maybe I want to play an Aviary. An Eerie? I say Aviary, that ain't right. An Eerie? There you go. Let's have that down so we can start making free 2 twos. Let them give the opponent a hard time. Fates Fetter is not good against Yorian. Like, dead card almost. An opponent with two Charming Princes scrying up through the deck. It's gonna be rough. It's gonna be a rough game of magic. Another Airy, which we could have played this turn if I didn't uh, commit so hard to dropping that temple. Could have had a pair of two twos. Gonna have to remember that one. Castle, that's something I can put fetters on at least. Veto, veto. 
Okay, this deck might not be what I thought it was. So now we want a Fetters of Witches Oven very much, but we can wait. We don't have to do it yet. We could shut down the veto, give creatures lifelink, but I don't think that really matters. I'm just going to turn off the castle. No card draw. Yeah, you should check out Fate's Fetters, opponent. <laughs> Might go good with your veto, and especially if you're playing stuff like Revitalize. Down to 21. Okay. Combo assembled, I guess. Fate's Fetters wouldn't take away Vito's passive ability, that's why we don't play it on the Vito. But it might take away the ability to give everything a lifelink. Let's hang on to this. And I guess we have to play it this turn. If we don't, we start falling behind, so may as well. As much as I'd love to save it for an oven, which I'm sure the opponent runs. And start attacking here because we're going to get a pair of two twos. Light of Hope. Look at that. Opponent with the technology. Third revitalize. They're just trying so hard. They're trying so hard. But I get to keep my two twos. Your bonus from Vito is just a one time thing, it doesn't get a lot better. All right, let's start with an attack. If we find another card to put in the graveyard, we can get the Uro back. So Fable Passage might actually be good. There's another Uro, but, hmm, one, two, three, four. I guess we'd have to draw land off the top. On the other hand, we have Teferi. Teferi can bounce Fate's Fetters, but we can't play it again. We already gained three life this turn though, so we don't have to be in a hurry. We're going to get another creature. Which is better? I think it's actually Teferi. The opponent will try to kill Teferi anyway. They always do. They all hate Teferi. So let's bounce the fetters, the one on the castle, because the opponent can't use it right now anyway. Get the 2-2. Two -two. If the opponent wants to attack and kill the Teferi, it makes Uro come back. Blocks. Blocks. It's only a matter of time. Plus we have the fetters now if the opponent does find an oven. That feels pretty good. Speaker of the Heavens. I think the opponent has full control turned on. What would make them do that? Hmm. Keep it coming. It's a lot of damage. You might not want to use that castle. I don't know. I guess it depends what options you think you have. Down to six. Let's bring Uro out. Alright, hit another land, and another Uro. I think we just play a Guard Mage here. It's another Flying Threat, it's three more life, it's another card. Not a lot of downside. And a Passage. I'll just use it now. The opponent seems to be really, I don't know, they're holding priority with something. I'll just pass the priority. Don't think we require any particular chess match here. Erebos' intervention is what uh, the opponent was holding on to. So that will kill a guard mage. They gain three, we lose three because Vito is still there. They still get attacked for 10 in the air next turn. And that's a scoop. We've got some temples and we have expensive cards, which is 
sort of what I've become used to, but since the deck doesn't have sweepers, I get really annoyed by the expensive cards, especially on the draw, because, like, I'm pretty sure I'll be too far behind to compete if the opponent's playing a good deck with a good curve. And that's one of the things with this deck I'm just trying to figure out. It's like, I mean, does, does it beat anybody who, who's trying to win? So here's a scavenging ooze. It's an opportunity to find out. Let's get the airy down. The next turn bond of flourishing can start helping us out. But we are an Uro deck, so that ooze has to be fettered. Locks an intruder. That will potentially kill the airy. Rimrock Knight. Okay, a very interesting take on adventure. I kind of want the land. But Teferi's pretty good too. And we should be able to use the scry to help ensure that we still make land. Backup fetters. Is that good? I don't think that's good. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, though. Maybe I'm supposed to... You know, they're an aggro deck. Let's keep it. Maybe I'm doing this all wrong. I mean, I'm willing to accept I might just play some of these decks badly. That's a really good Bone Crusher Giant there. The opponent's hand is really good. They get to use this Intruder now to get rid of the Airy. Alright, no more ooze. Game four. Who would have known Flax and Intruder would cause me so much trouble? Blessing Beast. If we draw the land, it's ECD. We do not, so it's another Fetters. Every frickin' plays a good one. But do they have an answer to the Gargs? Whatever the last card in their hand is, it's either a land. It might be an Embercleave. I guess Embercleave wouldn't be lethal here. We don't have a creature in our graveyard. We might be able to play Trawler next turn. This is a tricky one. There's a few ways to do it. I think we go for the Garg. Even if they have Domri's Ambush, it doesn't solve the issue very well, and it blocks an Ember Cleave really good. Home with a Rada. And the attack. It doesn't feel like a Cleave, though. So, uh, we can gain three life. We can draw a card. We can make a Beast. I think we just need to stay alive, and we should be able to win. So I'll take the life. Wow. Wow. Straight bluff? Maybe. Okay, it was a, it was an ambush. That's okay though. Back up to fairy, double to fairy bounce seems fine. Elspeth Conqueror's death can work on getting the Gargaroth back and get rid of the Rada. But we know they have a non-land on top of their deck because they didn't play it, so that's scary. They held it though. Must be another ambush. Don't think much else makes sense. Ambush isn't good against Dream Trawler, though. And we're at seven. Still, we're probably better off bouncing Rimrock Knight and playing it a little slow. These Teferis aren't getting any, any nicer in the hand, you know what I mean? Sorry, I'm late. Let's try this. Well, we can pay two, and we did gain three life this turn, so we get a 2-2, two -two, which is probably worth something. Can't block a questing beast, though. But next turn we get Gargs. We get the G unit. Opponent slams double Rimrock Knight. It's a big, it's a big boy. Trust me, I have a plan. Oh, do you now, Teferi? Uro? Uro's a good plan. I like Uro. Speaker? Well, we're a long way from using Speaker, but Speaker's not terrible. 
Give me that tutu. The healing comes strong. Paradise Druid, sure. Ambush. Off the questing beast, which is, has death touch, of course. Everybody getting into the red zone every turn. Classic. I've got it. Let's just get the Uro down. Dream Trawler doesn't gain the life right away. This does. We can save this one for next turn. Uh, actually, Teferi's on three. Yeah. This is fine. We don't need to play any of these out right now. There we go. Survive the red green onslaught. Yeah, keeping the second faith fetters made a big difference there. And even though we did miss a land drop, we survived. Mod Spaghetti moment. A game of ranked, but always on the draw. Had to be on the draw. All right. Hmm. A little bit awkward, but we could play the speaker on one. We might be against Team Wreck, so Teferi on three might be important. Let's be assertive. Obviously, when you shock, you're a ways further away from actually activating speaker. Opponent with a tap land on two. Team of Reclamation spotted. Doesn't take too long to identify these decks. Temple of Plenty. Um, no, I don't think I need more land. I think we've drawn plenty so far. That's a plenty pun. Do you like it? Whoa, no play. Awkward. Get him, Speaker. Maybe they're adventures. I've seen more adventures lately than I thought I ever would. If they had a growth spiral, they would have played on their turn, right? No, I'm really not sure. Am I supposed to go for Teferi? Into open mana? Yeah, I probably am. If they're Reclamation, it's still a really good play. If they counter it, so be it. Dragonfire. Okay, interesting. So they're probably Reclamation, Let's so we plus, and we know they play Dragonfire. Don't worry, I got this. Hmm, interesting. Let's get the area out here. Let's scry. Okay, well that's a scry next turn, and a Fates Fetters that we can cast. Let's keep plussing to Fairy. If we curve into Dream Trawler. Will that be good enough? They drew two straight lands off the top. They slammed the Reclamation. So, putting up Fate's Fetters on a Reclamation doesn't actually do anything. So we don't want to do that. We want to play it on the land. They have a shark. They have a shark. So making a 2-2 here is actually really important. And we don't want a minus. We're gonna need all the loyalty on Teferi we can get. And the opponent doesn't go for the shark. Maybe they have a Brazen Borrower for the Teferi. We will see. Or maybe they think they have to be bigger than this Griffin. All right, they just fire the Storm's Wrath. It might be the plan to go back to back Storm's Wrath. We won't gain life this turn, so we're not going to get a griffin, but we get Trawler. <laughs> Trawler is a big headache, at least until they get rid of Teferi and make a huge shark. They scooped! It's a miracle! It's a miracle. Alright, just real talk, you and me. I know I said it was a mom spaghetti moment. I actually lost, I think it was three games of ranked trying to make this deck work. I missed my third land drop in two of them in a row, which was very tilting. And in the third one, they played turn one Flourishing Fox, and I thought about my deck and said, yeah, I, I just lose, and I hate playing against cycling. They were easy scoops. 
And we are back for the post game wrap up. And this deck is fun, but very low powered, uh, very awkward. It has no early removal and it has no sweepers. So you are very reliant on curving out perfectly and probably ramping when you do it, which means there's an over reliance on the four Uros in the deck and having the land to actually play them. So the, the changes I made to the deck was getting these temples into the deck and going up to 28 land because I was sick of missing land drops, uh, trimming on the fetters and the guard mage, but I don't think that's good enough. Um, not, not to make this deck any better, of course, than like a good Bant ramp deck, which might run 30 land and a ton of powerful spells. <laughs> this is kind of a weird alternative that plays Griffin Airy, probably because it really likes Griffin Airy. And you'd think all the mono red and sacrifice decks that this one could clean up on. I didn't play any of those today. It was a very strange day in the arena. But yeah, uh, the deck is a fun, it's, it's fun. I, I wouldn't blame you for playing it at all. It doesn't need Teferi. If you want to cut Teferi from the deck, go ahead. Uh, you know me. I enjoy Teferi. I often felt like adding Hydroid Crisis would be good. Uh, Baneslayer Angel could also fit into the shell, and you'd be closer to rotation proof if you cut Teferi from the deck and cut Elite Guard Mage and added Baneslayer Angel and something else that's similar to Elite Guard Mage. There's probably another way to gain three life and draw a card in the format. But a Johnny, this this card never did anything for me. When it was in my hands, it I was falling behind and dying. And when it wasn't in my hand, good riddance. So uh, let me show you what changes I would make if I were to play the deck again tomorrow. I would probably make it more rotation proof just because that makes me feel like using the cards is a little more interesting. Although Bond of Flourishing uh, is kind of a big deal. I don't know if... I guess you could put Revitalize in the deck to replace that, but I think Bond of Flourishing is significantly better. It shouldn't surprise anybody. I would run Shatter. Uh, three might be the right number. Maybe you need four, depending how aggressive things are. And uh, another way to just draw some cards, gain some life, like Hydroid Crisis, I think would be better than Elite Guard Mage in a lot of spots. So I would run that. Um, but just a few suggestions for what I would do differently. Steer it closer to the power that Bant Ramp often offers without giving up too much on the life gain. I think the best combos in the deck are the Airy with uh, Uro and Bond of Flourishing. And I think as long as you have that kind of core, and Fate's Fetters isn't a bad uh, bridge either, but it's not great. Uh, I also don't like the Dream Trawler. If you like the Dream Trawler, play the Dream Trawler. People asking me way too much on a few videos lately, why not Dream Trawler? I don't think it's good. And we saw here it kind of failed to gain life when it entered the battlefield, so we didn't get the Griffin. And then the opponents usually had ways to interact or deal. So this card is a letdown for me, and I don't, I don't believe in it. I wouldn't play it. I'd rather have another Krasis. But you do you. And of course, uh, hopefully this video, if it served its purpose, gave you a cool new deck and shell to try out feel free to let me know what you do with it in the comments and on the way out the door let's give a shout out to mtg assistant the app i am using from overwolf and aetherhub.com and uh yeah there is a link in the description should be right near the top of the description if you want to try it out as far as i know it's for windows like leaving me comments like does this work on mac i'm not tech support i don't know but uh, I, I'm paid actor. <laughs> but yeah, you can support the channel by downloading and trying it out. You have nothing, I mean, I, I don't feel like you have much to lose by downloading it and trying it. If you hate it, get rid of it. If it doesn't work, oh well. So uh, thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.